Hello, hello, Jade Blair here. I am an independent escort in Queensland, Australia, where it's completely legal to do sex work here. And newly started OnlyFans creator, yay. Only been doing it for about two weeks now, but if you're interested, check it out, links are below. But today I wanted to talk to you about my first ever shift at a brothel. Now this was a legal brothel in Queensland and I have kind of touched on it in other videos, but I'll give you a bit of a start to finish. So I did a lot of research on the brothels before I went, which is really hard because this, you know, it's quite a taboo thing. So it's not like people post reviews and stuff of them. There's also a lot of laws in Queensland about what brothels are allowed to advertise. Um, so they can't really tell you anything about what it's like to work there, all the conditions, all the benefits. All they can say is, if you would like to work with us, email us here. That is all they're allowed to say. So I did end up emailing the brothel that I liked the most and um, they asked for a photo. I sent in a photo of me with like a little tight dress on. You don't need to send lingerie photos. You don't need to send like nudes, nothing like that. Absolutely not. Um, they just need to get an idea of your look and basically if you can, you know, look clean and hygienic and neat, neat and tidy. Sent that through, I guess I was approved. To be honest, they're not picky. Um, as long as you're neat and tidy and, and clean looking, they'll accept you and of age, of course, <laughs> and sound mind. <laughs> anyway, so I went in and did a tour. They showed me all the rooms. Um, they told me what my expectations were to the brothel, but also to the client. So what I had to do in a booking um, and they told me how much I would be earning and what I'm, where I am when I'm not working. So basically there's a ladies room that's just for ladies that you can just sit there and kind of chill until you have to see a client. And then we set me up for my first day there. Um, they decided they wanted me to come in on a weekday during the day because it would be a lot slower then. Um, usually it's busier on Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays and it's busier the later it gets into the night. Um, so I ended up coming in on a weekday, I don't remember what day, but it was between 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. was my shift. So I rock up at this brothel and I have this massive duffel bag. They'd given me a quick rundown on what to bring, but I was so nervous, so I overpacked, I just brought everything. So I wiggle on in with this massive duffel bag that had all of my makeup, it had my hair dryer, my straightener, which by the way, all brothels pretty much have ones you can use. It had like body washes and moisturizers. Again, they have this. Uh, deodorants, perfumes. I think I had two types of shoes. Every brothel has shoes you can wear. You really don't need to bring your own shoes unless you want to. Most people do bring their own shoes, but they have them. And I think I brought four lingerie outfits to wear because I wasn't sure what I should wear. I was so nervous. At this brothel, um, when you go out to greet clients and they pick which lady they would like to see, you wear lingerie, uh, you don't wear dresses. Um, some brothels are different, you wear dresses or they have different requirements. This one, it was lingerie and heels is what you had to wear. So I had four different outfits. Anyway, I walk in with this massive duffel bag and I go up to the manager, I'm like, hi, I'm Jade, I'm new. It was a different manager than the one that had been given me the tour, but thankfully she was very, very lovely and she ended up being my favorite ever manager. And I actually kind of miss her, like she was just a sweet person. And she's like, awesome, okay, I'm gonna be with you in a minute. I just have to do something, whatever she was doing. And she said, go get ready in the ladies room. Do you remember where it is? I was like, yeah. So I toddle on over to the ladies room and I sit down and in the ladies room, there's couches and lots of mirrors. And I'm looking at the mirrors and I'm like, get ready. I had done like my full face of makeup. I had curled my hair, my I had painted my nails. I had just showered before I came and, you know, sprayed myself so I was all moisturized and soft and smooth and smelling good and I was like, get ready. Does she, does she just mean like get changed or the way she kind of sounded, made it sound is like, go, go do your hair and makeup and I was like, but I've, I've already done it, like what's wrong with it? Anyway, some other ladies come into the room who were working ladies and I introduced myself and they were so sweet. That is really one of the best thing about brothels and something I really, really miss now that I'm independent is working with the other ladies because they are the most generous, sweetest, kindest people you will 
better than me. Of course, there's always bad apples. There is everywhere, but they were so kind. And so I said, she told me to get ready. I, th I thought I was, do, what, do I need to do more here? And they did suggest that I put on heavier makeup. So darker eyeshadow, a little bit more rouge. Um, they said my hair was fine. So bonus points to me. They weren't mean or nasty. They were just giving me advice that like the men like the dark stuff. Um, so it's a bit more of like a fantasy when they walk in. Um, this is something I'm not sure I fully believe now that I've been in this industry for a very long time, but at the time I was like, yep, awesome, and very happy to take on advice. Um, so I put on a little bit more makeup, and then I said, look, I, I don't really know what to wear, and so I pulled out all my outfits. I said, can you help me pack? And I said, is it really weird that I'm showing you my underwear? They're like, nah, darling, like we've seen it all before, don't worry, love. By the way, they were quite happily just changing in the ladies' room, walking around in their lingerie. They weren't covering up at all. Um, so it probably, it really wasn't weird that I was just like, which which one do you like? Which should I wear? Um, but it felt a bit weird to show a complete stranger, essentially my undies. But we picked one, we picked a piece of heels um, and I went off into the bathroom to go get changed because I felt really self-conscious, which is so funny to me now, because now I'm just like, woo, tits out. So I come back in my lingerie and heels and more makeup, and um, the manager finally had come up and started kind of talking to me and was like, okay, so do you remember what you have to do to like read a client and you know what the expectations are? And as we were kind of talking, a client walked in. So she let the client into the waiting area and all the ladies started to go out and say hello one by one so that he could pick one. She's like, off you go. And I was like, what, what, we haven't, like they told me kind of what to do, but like I wanted more information. I wasn't ready yet. So I was like, it's fine. I'll just, I'll just go out and say hello. And um, they kind of told me what to say. And I was like, surely I'm not gonna get picked. It'll be fine. So I kind of, you know, wander out and I'm like, hi, I'm Jade. Did you have any questions? And he's like, oh, no. And he's like, have I seen you before? I'm like, no, this is my first day. I've literally just got here. Never done this before, a bit nervous. And he's like, oh, no, that's okay, honey. And I was like, okay, well, nice meeting you. And then I walked off and came back into the ladies' room. And he immediately stood up and went to the reception desk. We can see them on the screens because it's on the TVs. Because even though we're not, we're in the ladies' room, not the waiting room. We can see the waiting room because it's all filmed on TVs, so we can see the clients before they see us. So the manager walks to go see the client. Um, they talk for a little bit. We can't hear what they're saying. We can just see them. They exchange the money. She walks back into the the waiting room. She says, "Jade, it's he picked you." And I was like, "What?" I've been here 20 minutes. Like, I thought there'd be like a bit more of like a run. Like, I'm so, I'm so, what do I do? I'm so freaking out. Um, not in that I didn't want to do it, but more just I really didn't expect my first intro to be my first client. Um, the other girls were so beautiful. I was like, why on earth would he pick me who's just stumbling about, having no clue what they're doing? But I was like, okay. And he's like, I had to tell him that you're brand new because um, another lady's gonna go in and show you how to do a health check on the client. I was like, okay. So she's like, go get your client and take him to the room. And she told me the name of the room. And I'm like, I don't remember which room that was. And she's like, okay, let me show you. So show me the room. She's like, do you remember where to get your towels and stuff? So she gave, we went to the linen closet and we got like the towels and all the stuff that I'm gonna need for the booking. And then I awkwardly trapezed back into the waiting room. I'm like, come with me. And um, we went into the, into the bedroom and I said, okay, um, I need to do a health check. I've never done one before. I have to get another girl to show me how to do it. And he's like, don't worry, love. You're doing fine. Just breathe. Um, I've done this a million times before. And I was like, cool. You can show me how we do this then. So I get this other lady who volunteered. She was very kind to do the health check. Um, Usually escorts are very happy to help each other in brothels when it comes to doing health checks and, and helping each other identify STDs. So it's usually not hard to find someone to do this. Um, occasionally a manager will, will do it, but usually you just ask another working lady. So she came in and so she, she told the guy, you know, you gotta drop your pants and she turns on this light that is on the bedside table and it is like a clinical spotlight. 
it's not like a, a bedside lamp with like a shade it's like a right there on his junk we're both on his on our knees and so she's explaining to me in very medical terms you know pull this back look flip this up look here this is what you're looking for anyway she does all that and she's like yep he's good to go now you guys negotiate extras i'm gonna leave and and i'm like extras i don't even know what i want to do in terms of extras a standard booking includes oral sex on the client a massage and um, a sex with con with a condom and the oral sex has a condom as well everything else is extra and it's at the lady's discretion if she wants to do it what she does and if she charges for it and how much anyway so the client sits down on the bed and he pulls out hundred and fifty dollars and he slams it on the table on the yeah on the bed and I was confused because he had already paid for the standard service. So I'm like, okay, so this must be for an extra. And I was like, oh, what's this for? And he said, oh, that's just for you. It's a gift. It's a tip. And I was like, oh, oh, like you, you don't have to give me a tip. Like, that's fine. I don't know why I said that. Newbie, nervous. And he's like, no, 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 it's for you. You keep it. I was like, thank you. And picked it up and was like, what do I do with this? And so I just kind of opened the closet that was next to us that had like cleaning slides and shoved it in there. Um, Hint, I was supposed to leave the room and hide the money with my personal possessions or put it in a money locker. You don't usually leave it in the room with the client in case the client steals it back or you forget about it. That does happen and ladies just leave money there and then at the end of the shift, they're like, I think I'm short <laughs> and we can't find it. Anyway, so the client's like, I'm going to go have a shower now. Why don't you set up the bed? So he has a shower. I put down the sheet for the bed that we'll be using. And as he comes out of the shower, he says, I want to do a role play. And I was like, okay, um, I'll be honest. I don't, I'm not good at role plays. To this day, I don't do role plays. I think this kind of scarred me, not in like a traumatic, awful way, more in just a oh that was cringy kind of way um and he said i want to do a booking a fantasy where i am at a brothel but it's i think he said it was a swedish brothel or a russian brothel apparently it's a real brothel somewhere where it's like a club and it has multiple levels like it goes up and up and up in stories and you walk into the club and all of the escorts are completely naked and you can mingle with them and chat and then take one back to the room if that works. So he said, I want you to, to basically be the escort and I'll be the client in this rush, whatever it was, brothel. And you're walking completely naked. And I'm like, oh, but I, I don't want to leave the room naked. Like, so the other ladies can see me and I'll be on camera. And he's like, no, no, it's okay. You can just like pretend to come in naked. So I'm like, okay. So he turns around and I take off my clothes and I'm like, Am I supposed to be doing like a Russian accent? I can't do that. Like I'm not, I'm not that skilled. So I decided not to do the accent. I think I ended up falling into like an American accent, which I often do when I'm nervous. I think I just watched a lot of American TV and it stuck when I was a kid. Anyway, so I, I kind of walk up and I'm like, hi, how are you doing? Like pretending to be this like very sexy, confident escort that's completely naked in a night, in essentially a nightclub trying to pick up this guy. And I kind of played it as I am just like naughty and just excited to be here and want to do something a little bit deviant to kind of like spite my parents and, you know, kind of get like a bit of sexy, sexy stories, you know, that kind of thing, just like kind of like a naughty, adventurous 18 year old. And he kind of, I think, wanted me to be really shy and, and like I actually was in real life like shy and not really wanting to be there and being kind of like not forced into it but forced into it like pressured into it and I just kind of ref but he didn't tell me that I found that out as we were kind of role playing because he kept on being like oh what do your friends think about this or why did you come here or oh, are they nice to you here and and I just didn't want to go down that road because I was like I don't I don't really want to do a, a fantasy like, like that's a non-con fantasy, a, a consensual non-consent fantasy. I just didn't feel comfortable with it and it wasn't discussed with me prior. So I just kept going like, oh, this is like so much fun and I'm just like loving it. And I just want to do something naughty and sexy. 
um, and wild. Um, and I think he just, after a while, just, you could literally just see it in his eyes where he just gave up on the fantasy entirely. Like he just stopped and was just, just started kissing me and just kind of, we just finished the booking. Um, I really should have said no straight away when he said, let's do role play. Um, or at least ask more questions, like gotten a character profile of what way he wanted me to play this character. But you know, lesson learned. Um, I also found out later I probably could have charged a lot more than $150 extra for that type of scenario, particularly since it was consensual on consent. But here we are. <laughs> it didn't go for very long anyway. So that was my very first booking. He wasn't angry or upset or anything. I think he just kind of was like, oh, this is working. Let's just have a good time. So we did, you know, we finished up. I walked him out the door. Um, I cleaned up the room and the day continued on. I don't remember how many clients I had that day. It was a couple. And I actually got, I think the next two clients that came in booked me as well, like one after the other. Um, and one of the ladies was like, it's very normal to get booked a lot when you're new because a lot of guys like variety and you're new. So you're the new shiny toy in a way. Um, so that was really my first shift. It was quite interesting learning the hygiene standards. I am a very clean person. Being clean is important to me. I don't want to be spreading germs. But I didn't actually expect the brothel to be super, super clean. I guess that's just the stigma and the taboo around working, uh, sorry, around working, around sex work. Um, but they were very on it. You know, sheets must be cleaned, everything must be disinfected. And the other girls were coming up and like inspecting my work in a nice way, not in like a, we're mad, but they were like, you know, we want to check to make sure that we keep our working environment safe and clean for all of us. So they made sure I was doing it correctly. A lot of the, the education and the training goes between sex worker to sex worker. It's not management to sex worker and that's because they're contract, we're contractors. So not employees. Um, so yeah, that was really my first day. There's not a lot that was crazy other than my first and only role play that I've ever done. All the other ones were super easy, super kind of just standard bookings. I think I got one or two kissing extras, um, but otherwise they were just standard bookings. Everyone was super nice. I remember when I left, I was like, that was easy. And I looked in the mirror, like kind of expecting like, cause I'd done this horribly taboo thing that society hates and says that I'm now evil and just being like, I feel the same, but you know, a grand richer. <laughs> I don't remember exactly how much it was, but it was it was enough that I was happy with um, what I made at the end of the day. So yeah, when it got to 6 p.m., I packed up and I went home and did it all again in you know a couple of days. I usually do two to three shifts. Over time, I learned more and more. Usually a lot of the learning happened in between bookings. When I was in the ladies' room, we would be chatting and I would just be say, hey, I, I don't know how to deal with this situation or what's the protocol? Can you get, just give me some tips? Um, so yeah, the other ladies were very, very helpful. And that's, that's the story of my first time in a brothel. Do you guys have any questions for me? Keep in mind, there are a lot that I can't answer. I can't tell you about what I currently do in terms of like what I provide in my service currently because of Queensland advertising laws and I can't recommend you go to a certain brothel, see a certain lady, I can't encourage you to do sex work or see a sex worker. So there are some restrictions, but otherwise, let me know.